Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with No Budget Reviews, the series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use fluid head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR, but we do have a lot of fun. Well, good afternoon to everyone. This is a 1999 Saab 9.3 2 litre light pressure turbo SE. I had another 9.3 on the channel quite recently, which is a 2007 um, convertible. There's a second generation of these. First generation, like this one, uh, was based on what was called the NG900, uh, which was completely different from the original generation 900 in that the platform is the same as the Vauxhall Cavalier Mark III and a whole lot of other General Motors cars. This is from the period when Saab um, was owned by General Motors, although this still has what's called the Saab H engine in it, which was Saab's own work. It's amazing to think that cars like this are available for under a thousand pounds. This one is worth a little bit more than that. It's very kindly been supplied by Simon from Langley Prestige in Chelmsford. Um, you would have seen some of the cars um, that he has, or had actually, um, before on the channel. The car lasted from 1998 until 2002 and Saab claimed that there were over 1,100 changes uh, between the new generation 900 and the um, original generation 93, which one of these is. Dashboard doesn't look particularly different really to me, it looks quite similar and it is a nice soft touch material. The other thing about this car is that it still does have that old Saab quirkiness, it has the ignition lock down there, it has the night panel button and it has all these typical kind of Saab switches and things like that. Although one thing I have noticed is that the car has a good old Corsa B electric mirror switch. Isn't that lovely? So many General Motors cars of the era have that. One of the issues with the with the car is that it doesn't have um, the display for the climate control working particularly well at the moment but if we put the key in down here I think I just need to put my foot on the brake and we will start her up. There we go so it's just checking all through all the systems as you can see yes the uh, display for that climate control is uh, not working very well um, I think I would say but there is a sport mode I don't think I need to use the sport mode in the type of driving that I do. I do, however, need to use these heated seats because it's a Saab and therefore we must have them. Also got cruise control, but this is an SE, which was sort of the more luxurious model when the car was launched. But other ones came, things like the Vigan and the Aero. This was the uh, sort of more luxurious one. We've got some nice cherry wood trim and all kinds of exciting things. To turn that off, you don't need to keep running the engine. Um, Yes, if I just turn that on, yes, it will just come on like that. I don't know why it keeps bonging at me. There's nothing nothing necessarily wrong. It's because of a door open or something. Oh, it's gone. Test brake lights, eh? All sorts of exciting things. So the night panel. I should ask you about that won't work unless we have the ignition on, so we won't do that right now. Um, night panel, if I turn it on again. So turn the lights on in the car, just by that switch there. The night panel button will, there we go, it kills all the, the instruments if I put it back on, it turns them back on again. Um, that's just the, the 
being less distracting at night, and I can understand that. Built-in stereo, a double den unit, I imagine the display is at the top of there. But apart from this little display down here, everything works. And the car's only done 70,000 miles. Sometimes I can't believe what you can pick up for no budget reviews money, and although this car's worth a little bit more, it's just extraordinary. I, I'm a big fan of this. Of course, having a beige interior does help, and things like an electric sunroof that I've been told I can play with. Um, I won't do that at the moment. Uh, what I will do, though, is have a go at the glove box to see if I can fit my secret mission documents in. No! No, 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 it was, it was all going so well, no, mm. never mind, let's have a look and see if we've got an ashtray, yes we have, and of course a, a 12 watt socket, that's what we call it these days, right, I think I'm going to have to get in the back of this, what they used to call the coupe in the final model year of these, so let's do that. Okay, so we pull this lever here. That should go forward. Yes, it does. On a nice sort of ratchet. It's quite easy to step in the back, actually. It's not too bad. Right, let's just see if we can get this to come back to where we want it. There we are. Now, with the passenger seat slid forward a bit, there's actually plenty of room. Headroom's not bad at all, actually. I'm not that tall. I'm only 5 foot 11. But we also have some cabin lights for the rear occupants and they work. A little piece of storage down there, a nice uh, material. Leather seats must have been an option though because this is the uh, more luxurious model of the 93 and you don't get leather seats as a as standard. You do get uh, a three-point seat belt for the centre occupant in the back though. You do get an armrest as well, with a ski hatch. It's appropriate being a Saab, isn't it, that you have a ski hatch. There we go. Yeah, long for long loads. Let's put that back properly. There we are, it's not going to fly forward. We've even got some air vents in the back of here as well. Some big pockets for whatever the earth you think you'd need. You know, I do like this car. I, I, I like it a lot. It, it feels a lot more dated than the second generation 93, but that's to be expected really. It went into production as the 900 um, NG in 1993. So by the time this car was made in 99, it, it was a little bit um, on the old fashioned side. Anyway, let's uh, take a look in the boot. One really annoying thing about this car is the boot keeps locking itself. So. You have to have a press that button or the fiddle of a key fob and it just keeps locking itself, like, it's very annoying. So lift up the hatchback, this is one of the main selling points of one of these over say, I don't know, a 3 Series or a Mercedes C-Class. Just move this out of the way. The car did actually come with um, some Brembo brake pads and discs, doesn't need them at the moment, but they came with the cell when someone bought it. And there we have the uh, spare tyre with still its pimply bits on it, so it's obviously not been on and uh, all the tools and things, and an enormous boot in comparison with, I don't know, a, 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 a E46 3 Series, something like that. Massive boot, really good access. There's the ski hatch I was talking about earlier. With a boot light, I haven't got any sort of hooks for ha um, hanging things on, but it's pretty good. I like it. Wow, and here is the Saab H engine, it's one of the last variants of it. This uh, started life back in the sort of, I don't know, early, early 70s or maybe even earlier uh, as the Triumph Slant 4 engine co-developed with Saab which actually went into the 1850 HL Dolomite and also the Sprint. It does have a cam belt, and uh, this one has been done fairly recently. But it's just interesting to s sort of see um, the final version of this engine, which dated back ooh, a long time by this stage, um, over 30 years.
In this case, it's a light pressure turbo. This is an early light pressure turbo. Um, 9.3 of the original generation, so it develops 154 horsepower. The later ones were 150, I think, obviously, emissions regulations. These little type DR things are everywhere on this car. I don't really know what they are or what they do. We haven't really worked that out actually yet. But uh, there we go. Anyway, I think it's time to go for a drive. Right viewers, time to go for a little drive in this lovely Saab. I do appear to be wearing my sensible second-hand jacket. That's probably because this car is quite corduroy. It is quite sensible and I do like it. The engine's available in the original generation 9.3, most of them based on the Saab H engine, where a 2 litre normally aspirated engine with 130 horsepower, that was joined when the car was launched by a 2.3 litre with 150 horsepower. Both of those were non turbos. Now, the 2.3 didn't actually last particularly long. It was replaced later in 98 when the car was, uh, when it was launched um, with a light pressure turbo version of the 2 litre, which is what this is. First of all, it had 154 horsepower, and later on, it was just 150, like the uh, 2.3 normally aspirated engine had been. There was just a high pressure turbo, I think it was called, or just a normal turbo. Uh, that had a big T after it, this sort of small T, this light pressure turbo. All of the engines were uh, 2 litre turbos, apart from some of the crazy ones. Later on, I think about the year 2000, the car gained another 2 litre turbo, which was known as VHOT, high output turbo. That was 200 horsepower. And then right at the top of the line was the crazy Viggin model. That developed 225 horsepower or thereabouts and that was known for having you know torque steer issues. There were also some diesels but due to controversial government legislation and other reasons we don't talk about diesels on this channel. What we can talk about though is the rather nice smooth ride of this car. It's a very different setup of something like a BMW. One thing you don't get in this car though is um, BMW-like cornering. It doesn't quite handle the same. It does feel a bit more like, I don't know, a Vectra B, which we've had on the channel recently. Um, hardly a surprise. My GV engines pretty nippy for 154 horsepower. It's, it seems a lot more than that, particularly because we've got an automatic version here. But of course, there was a, a five-speed manual available too. Brakes feel good, like when someone in a Citroen C4 decides to reverse straight out in front of you without any warning, like that. Yes. Uh, hmm. She has thanked me. So the trim levels available in the uh, uh, original generation 9.3 were the base model, that would have been just 2 litre I, something like that, then S, and then an SE. Later on, things like the uh, Crazy Aero, which is a very desirable model these days, and the Vigan came along. Despite the fact that it doesn't handle anything like as well as say a 3 Series, I'm still quite enjoying myself. It wouldn't be no budget reviews without the camera mount in the way. 
And also, in this case, we've got reflection of a dealer plate too. Isn't that wonderful? It's slightly moved. Uh, nevertheless, yes, um, I'm enjoying myself going down these kind of back back lanes. I mean, we've got some body lean and the steering is not as precise in any way as something like a 3 Series and neither does it need to be. It just feels like a nice comfortable car for doing really high mileage and we've got you know front passenger and side airbags in this car all, all standard in all models. I've got cruise control, heated seats, climate control. It's just a nice and pleasant car to drive around and it's quite practical. It feels well made. You know, one or two bits of general motor switch gear aside. It's just a nice just a nice car with unless you go for the big and all the aero you don't have to worry about things like, you know, ex extraordinary sporting ability and things like that. I think 0 to 60 of this car is probably about nine seconds. But it feels with this little light pressure turbo a little bit more urgent than that. I like this car viewers. Whoops. I like it a lot, despite the fact my dealer plate has just fallen off. I suppose I'd better pull over and fix that. Yes, why don't we do that and we can come to some conclusions about the first generation Saab 93. Apologies for a slightly strange uh, lighting viewers, um, that's just the way it goes on no budget reviews. So the trim levels in addition to the base, SE and uh, just the S we've discussed already. There was the Aero, the Airflow, the S Airflow, the SE Sport and of course the Crazy Vigan with all its torque steer. The basis of this car was also used in of course the uh, Cavalier Mark III the Vauxhall Vectra B, the Vauxhall Calibra, uh, Saturn L series, and of course the Saab 95 as well, which was launched in 1997. So viewers, should you buy the original generation Saab 93? Well, as long as you've got a car that's in condition like this, and you know it's been well serviced, there's no reason why not. I think some of the parts are actually cheaper than say a contemporary BMW or Mercedes because of all this General Motors stuff. It doesn't drive like a BMW, that's for sure, but maybe people who buy these don't want that. They want something that's more sort of comfortable and a little bit strange and you know has a, a big hatchback and if that's what you're after then this car delivers in spades. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed for watching this episode of No Budget Reviews. Please don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, click on notifications to be informed of new videos. Social media links are in the video description below. And thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching.